I'm Tom Campbell, editor-publisher of WNYLaborToday.com, reporting from Williamson, New York, just east of Rochester, where striking MOTS workers enter their 12th week on the picket line. For people that don't know, in a nutshell, um, what's the strike about, when did it occur, and, and where are you now? Well, it's all about, Tom, um, the fact that May 23rd, the company told us, after not being able to negotiate in good faith with us, which we were more than willing to do, uh, they told us that they were going to implement their last, best, and final offer, which was a $1.50 an hour cut in pay, a freeze of our defined pension so it would never grow any larger than what it currently is, a 20% reduction in our 401k company match, a reduction in our health care but making us pay a much higher premium for it. Now if the company was asking for concessions as you just outlined, are, are they in bad shape? Do, do they need it to stay alive? Absolutely not. This company profited after all bills were paid last year, $555 million, this Williamson site alone profited $50 million of that $555 million. Their CEO just received a 113% increase in pay. Doesn't make sense to me. Um, with the numbers that you just outlined, wouldn't it be far easier and far less costly to sit down and work out a fair and equitable agreement with Local 220 rather than go through a strike? Most definitely, because right now they're currently not only hurting the facility, they're hurting the MOTS brand name, and they're hurting this community of which this company operates in. You were telling us off camera that uh, the capacity, uh, the manufacturing capacity here at the Mott's Williamson plant is down drastically. Can you tell me again uh, what those figures are? Definitely. Uh, when we came out on strike, we were operating at approximately an 87% efficiency level. And since we've been out, they have dropped down to approximately a 12% efficiency level. How are they making it? Um, uh, you, your workforce is obviously on strike. Are, are they bringing out-of-town workers? Are they hiring scabs? Yes, they are. They're, they have ran ads in the Rochester paper, the Syracuse paper, advertising for full-time temporary workers. Uh, and they have done this locally. Uh, they have brought them from out of state. Uh, they're trying to do it any way they possibly can. The, the bottom line here, Tom, is the fact that we're not just general labor canning factory workers. We are a skilled labor workforce of food processors. Here in western New York, the Mont's name is quite well known. What would people see if they went into a local grocery store that had been made, uh, produced here, and, and shipped out through western New York? What will we see? Give us some examples. Uh, right now you're going to see empty shelves <laughs> because they, they are unable to take and produce like we were producing. Uh, our workforce was producing plant-wide sauce and juices 40,000 cases a day. Right now, they're producing approximately 6,000 cases a day. Uh, if, if we were still in there, they would see full shelves full of very high quality product that every one of us is proud to put that Mott's name on. Well, if capacity is down from 87% to 12, and at a full workforce producing 40,000 cases a day, I, I can't even begin to think of, of what that production is. Why isn't the company coming back to the table and attempting to, again to work out a fair and equitable agreement? Their main goal is to break this union. And they feel that the best way to get to the workers in this union are to take and go after their pockets. The best part, though, of this whole union right now is our solidarity and our strength and the belief these people have in what their leadership is bringing them through. You had said earlier your members are not making uh, King's Ransom on a yearly basis. I think you said the average salary was around 30 to uh, around 30, I'm sorry, around $38,000. The company wanted to crank you down to what by taking a $1.50 an hour cut? Uh, it would wind up being down to about $30,000. Uh, some of the lower pay grades, which we do have a few 
uh, grade twos, they would be taking these people down to poverty levels. How can people survive on $30,000 a year, especially if you're taking a third of it for taxes? Well, we were told during negotiations that if a dollar fifty an hour cut in pay was going to make you take and possibly lose your house or your car, you needed to sell them and look for something more affordable because you were living beyond your means. In addition, I understand that 10 of your 300 uh, striking members are, are battling cancer themselves. Can you tell me a little bit about what they're going through and how they're holding up? Well, at first it, it was catastrophic. These people came out of there having health care. The company had no allegiance to their conditions whatsoever and they automatically discontinued their health care once we went on strike. Our international came through and for these people that are on this chemo treatments and life-threatening medications that they need, our international paid for their COBRA so that their health could be maintained. With all this said, what's been the reaction of the Wayne County uh, community as well as the union community? What kind of support are you getting? The, the support is overwhelming, Tom. Uh, we're basically on a daily basis, sometimes weekly basis. We're, we're getting food donations, monetary donations, water, ice, any kind of a, a need that we may have. Uh, the churches and local food banks are reaching out to us, helping people that need the food donations. The state, the state police and the Wayne County sheriffs, they are showing us such support, and they have come right out and told us that they have never seen such a peaceful and more meaningful demonstration than what we are portraying right now. When you first went out on strike on May 23rd, it was more of a, a local story, a, a, a local picket strike uh, contract problem. But this is Blossom. This is something much, much more, isn't it? Yes, it is. This, this has gone nationwide. I, I have to honestly say it's gone globally because right now it has gotten to the point where the leadership of this union has put the word out to the membership that we need to take and stick strong to what we have come out here to do because we've put our footprint in the sand now against corporate greed for blue collar workers from the north to the south and to the east to the west. And we need to convey our message and make everyone believe, whether they're union or non-union, Tom, the importance of fighting corporate greed. You have strength in this hand and you have solidarity in this hand and you have to put them together and fight corporate greed.